Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, we've got a really cool sneak peek at Season 2 of Camp Cretaceous to go over that actually features the Tyrannosaurus Rex in full-on attack mode. So just yesterday, out of nowhere, the Jurassic World YouTube channel happened to release this clip from an action sequence in the new season, and a lot of people, and I'm pr I think pretty much everybody that saw it was like, wow, that looks awesome, that looks fun, I can't wait to see how everything unfolds. Now, the first thing that hit my mind, besides the fact that everything I was looking at looked really, really fun, and I was kind of shocked that uh, a show that I know is made for kids is still able to be this tense, because... On a side note, I know all these characters probably aren't going to die. I just, in the back of my head, my logic in my brain goes, okay, they're all going to be fine. But somehow they still get me where I'm like, yeah, that's scary. A kid in a tree with a walkie-talkie going off to where a Tyrannosaurus can hear her. Like, I don't know how they're able to do it, but they do it really, really well. Anyways, the first thing that struck me as being very, very weird was the fact that the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the original Rex from Jurassic Park, appears to be building its own nest and I'll get into more of that later but I guess I should lay out the whole scene in full so that we can go over it together and have fun with this bit by bit so the way this scene starts off is with Darius and Kenji inside of the Tyrannosaur Kingdom which was where the T-Rex was housed in Jurassic World and they're trying to get to this little module device that appears to be in a fake tree and we know that the idea for this season is that they're supposed to activate a signal that sends its way to the mainland so that someone can come back to Isla Nublar and rescue them. Well, okay, if that's the case, logically speaking in my mind, I'm like, okay, so if that's what that thing does, then why is it inside of the T-Rex kingdom? Because let's say something bad happened. It totally makes sense that they would have some sort of alarm system inside of the Tyrannosaur kingdom because, well, it's the T-Rex. It's one of the most dangerous dinosaurs in the island, but I just don't know if like the T-Rex broke the glass to the actual observing area that it was in, would that warrant someone sending a signal all the way to the mainland? Wouldn't you just try to get ACU on it immediately? So I'm a little bit confused as to what exactly is going on here as far as logistics goes, but uh, this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to activate this little signal, and we don't know for certain that it's going out to the mainland. I mean, I think that's what it's doing, but we don't really have all the facts laid out in front of us. Anyways, what we see See the T-Rex doing after that is actually observing Sammy when she's up in the tree and I guess these kids have to know that the T-Rex can't see them if they don't move because she's staying completely still the T-Rex is like staring at her it's actually a really really cool imagery it's oh, I just wish that they had kept the, the Rex's scars from her battle with the Indominus because they're all gone it's like come on man imagine that thing all bloodied up as it should be like in the timeline I get it's animated I get that there's artistic liberties with some Something that's not live action, but still, like, that would have been awesome. Anyways, it's staring her down, and it bites a branch and rips it off and starts walking back to its nest. So, okay, I have so many questions going on right here. Why is the T-Rex building a nest? I mean, this is not what I would assume would be normal behavior when it's inside of its paddock. You know what I mean? Because Jurassic World has been destroyed for... I'm going to assume a couple of days or maybe weeks where when all of this stuff takes place. And... The implication of building your own den or nesting site would mean that maybe it's just doing it so that it can have a more comfortable place to stay, but why wouldn't it do that when it was living there for like the last 10, 15 years? It's a little complicated in my opinion, but one thing that I've seen some people say is that, well, maybe this is the T-Rex about to like lay eggs or something. And I, I just don't know because that seems to go against some of the logic that was set forward with some of the other Jurassic Park movies. Now, if this wasn't the T-Rex from the original Jurassic Park, I would be like, okay, yeah, probably there's different genetics involved and Dr. Wu could have done something to have like a different animal gene get spliced into it. But we know that when it came to the Jurassic Park dinosaurs, the way they manufactured and cloned them was by getting as much actual dinosaur DNA as possible synthesized before, you know, plugging in the gaps with amphibian DNA. And the only thing we really know that that amphibian DNA would help them do is change their sex from female to male, you know what I mean? But okay, so this is the other thing that I want to add on top of that. Would that mean that, like, let's just go with the fan theory that this T-Rex could be about to lay eggs. Can you 
uh, inseminate yourself um, and just lay your own eggs. I know that in stuff like Godzilla from 1998, they talk about the animal being asexual. And I know that in reality with actual reptiles, there's something called parthenogenesis, which is a natural form of asexual reproduction. And it basically occurs without fertilization by sperm. It's basically animals that are able to develop an embryo and an unfertilized egg cell. And they kind of just, yeah, like Godzilla basically. But I, I just wonder, like, if this is true, if this is what the dinosaur is actually doing, then why haven't we seen it do that in, like, any of the other movies or events? Wouldn't Isla Nublar be overrun with little T-Rexes then? Like, well, then again, T-Rexes are cannibals, so maybe she ate them. But that doesn't make sense either, because in the Lost World, they raise their young, but then again, there's no male, so... I don't know. <laughs> That's just going off on a very weird tangent. Who knows what's going on right here? Personally, I, I just think it's really cool to see the T-Rex actually engage in some sort of animalistic behavior where it's trying to build a nest. I just don't know why. That's the big question that I have for all of you and all fans in general is because this is an old dinosaur. This dinosaur was the one that broke out and killed Donald Gennaro in Jurassic Park. This is now nearly... Actually, it's over. It's 22 years after the events from the first Jurassic Park. That's when this stuff is taking place. So I wonder, like, what is this T-Rex doing? I get that now that it's out of its paddock, it can roam around and do whatever it wants. And that's basically what it's doing. But why would it build a nest? You know what I mean? That's just, it's very perplexing to me. But anyways, the other part of this little clip that we have to talk about is actually the idea that Brooklyn has in order to get the T-Rex's attention away from Darius and Kenji. So that they can use whatever is inside of that fake tree. Now, her plan, the way they have edited it, looks to be that she's just running out in the middle of Main Street and screaming, hey, Brooklanders, and the T-Rex turns around, it's like, oh, you, you done screwed up, and like goes running at her. Well, I think that they're actually, okay, so spoilers, because I don't want any of you to watch this video and be like, oh man, now that scene's spoiled for me, but I'm, I'm telling you, this is my theory about what's happening. If you pay attention to where she is when the T-Rex actually looks out at her on Main Street, it looks like the pink human silhouette is positioned right in front of where the Indominus Rex was pulled into the lagoon by the Mosasaur. You see the destroyed fencing right there, and you see the T-Rex drop the stick and roar when it's looking at her right there. But when you cut away and see Brooklyn's expression where she's like standing there trying to like, all right, come on T-Rex. She looks to be in a completely different position. If you it, if you like pay attention behind her, the fencing for the Mosasaurus Lagoon is still up. And then when they cut back and you see the T-Rex running towards this pink silhouette that's standing still, you can see like a piece of white that's like in her arm that doesn't really look natural. And it also looks like she's holding up some sort of little device that is a camera or some sort of loudspeaker. And then they cut back to Brooklyn and she's not holding that at all. And she's still standing in the same position she is. So in my opinion, it looks like this is a very clever, like edited bait and switch to where I don't know how, but maybe there's like, I get that Brooklyn's like a very famous person in terms of the internet social media world so maybe she's got like a cardboard cut out of herself and the way that they have lured the t-rex is by having this loudspeaker or you know something with uh the fake brooklyn's arm and it calls out and makes noises and that's how the t-rex knows that there's someone here and it runs after her and it's basically it looks like to me it looks like to me this girl's trying to make the t-rex fall into the lagoon <laughs> i don't know if that's what's happening but we know she doesn't die because she's in fallen kingdom so i don't know th th there's just so much here that i'm i'm so I'm questioning so much of it. This looks very fun though. I, I wanna talk about tone really quick. I really love the tone of this. This whole Tyrannosaurus attack, it, it just, it's very, very fun. The show is TVPG. I think this is basically, if I had to compare this to anything else, this is like Star Wars Rebels uh, in terms of like tone and quality to like what you would compare to the actual live action series. I definitely feel like Camp Cretaceous and Battle at Big Rock are kind of neck and neck for me in terms of their quality. You know, I grew up with this franchise in the Lost World and Jurassic Park and I loved Fallen Kingdom and I kind of stack all of that stuff in this this other area like where I guess other fans would be like okay this is my Revenge of the Sith this is my Empire Strikes Back this is my Return of the Jedi for me Camp Cretaceous is is a lot like Rebels the tone of this though is is very good I don't know how they're able to pull this off I don't know how they're able to get me for some reason when I watch the show I'm like wow that's intense 
And I imagine, <laughs> I'm trying to imagine how intense it would be for me if this came out in 1999 or 1997 and, and how I, it would probably have me on the edge of my seat. I just can't believe that they're able to do that, man. But anyways, that's pretty much everything that I could possibly talk about and ramble on for uh, this new little clip that they've released called Sneaking Into the T-Rex Nest on the Jurassic World YouTube channel. Season two is right around the corner, and if it's a lot like what they just showed off here, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be really, really well received. I actually think that this season might be even better than the last, but I guess we're going to have to all wait and see. Anyways, guys, what are all of your thoughts on this little clip? What did you think about Brooklyn's plan to get the t-rex away from them why is the t-rex trying to build a nest what's going on there and why do you think kenji and darius are trying to activate that little module is this a beacon to the mainland or is this something completely different and let's talk about logistics how does all this stuff work in a real world sense because it is canon to jurassic world and well i really want to talk about that stuff so whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be i'd love to hear them in the comments down below now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.